Well, hello again, everyone. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show. Today, a quick episode because I want to show you some of the diagnostic screens on some of these popular G-Shock Square watches. Now, these are all, uh, well, you know, different varieties that all use the same module. It's module 3159 on your Casio G-Shock Square. So all of these watches are going to do the same thing as far as, uh, you know, functions and when you push the various buttons. What I'm going to show you are some informational diagnostics diagnostic screens that, well, knowing about this is not really going to enhance the user experience of having a watch like this, but it's just informational and, you know, for those of you who want to know everything there is to know about a Casio G-Shock Square watch, here's just a little bit more information for you. So let me demonstrate this on one of the watches. One of the reasons I'm showing you this is it's not in the manual, so you probably won't figure this out on your own unless you really get bored and you start <laughs> pushing buttons, all kinds of crazy combinations. What I've got here is there's some button combinations you can press where you need to press three buttons at the same time. And that can be a little bit tricky because sometimes, like if I press this button, I'm trying to press this button down here along with other buttons at the same time, but I accidentally push this one a little bit early, then I'm going to get into some other modes and I'm not really going to access the, the diagnostic screens that I'm about to tell you about. So I try to, if I can figure out a button that isn't going to really affect something immediately, I kind of push that button first and then push the other two while still holding that one down. I try to do it very quickly, but uh, just a fraction of a second early on, say, the light button, which doesn't necessarily uh, affect any of the modes as I, as I push other, other ones down. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to turn this sideways because it's a little bit easier for me to coordinate this. I'm going to push every button except the one here on the upper right side. And most of the manuals, the buttons are marked A, and this one over here, B, this one down here, C, and D. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you, first of all, pressing all the buttons except A, then all the buttons except B, then all the buttons except C, and all the buttons except D, and show you how it gets into some of these diagnostic screens. So first of all, every button except A. If I do this just right, oh, I didn't do it right. Let me try that again. Oh, let's see, I'm having trouble pushing that, pushing three at a time. Ah, okay, I did it. All right, so this is uh, having to do with the atomic time reception of multiband six. So what does this mean? J40. Well, what this actually refers to is one of the multiband six transmitters, one of the ones from Japan that is broadcasting a uh, continuous 40 kilohertz carrier wave for the time data that uh, this watch is trying to process. So J40 refers to that one. If I push this button down here, button C, then J60 is the other uh, atomic time transmitter out of Japan that uh, it broadcasts at a continuous 60 kilohertz carrier wave. Push this again, and now it's U60 because that's WWVB in the United States, also 60 kilohertz. This was uh, the one from Germany, which I think is actually 77.5 kilohertz. And then here's one from, uh, I guess that's the one from the UK. And then, you know, a couple other references here. So this is, again, just talking about the different transmitters in different parts of the world that multiband six is trying to receive. That's what you get there. Okay, now I'm going to get out of this and go back to the normal timekeeping home screen. And now I'm going to press every button except this uh, button B here and see what this does. So here I go. Let's see if I can get this right on the first shot. Okay, this is an LCD diagnostic uh, mode. So you can see that almost all of the LCD segments are, uh, are, are turned on in this mode. Not all of them but most of them. So if I push this button down here again, just this one by itself, now it looks like they're all on. So this is an easy way to see that every single LCD thing that could be uh, visible on the screen is now visible at the same time. And so now you know that your LCD screen is okay. Push it again and it makes some other patterns. Uh, now I pushed it again and now that says 3150 which I would have thought, well, that must be the module number. But actually, the module on this is 3159. So I'm not quite sure what these numbers mean, but I'll push this button again. Denver, that just happens to be the 
the home time setting that I have right now on this watch. And now we're back to our regular uh, timekeeping mode. Okay, now I'm going to press every button except C here and see how this goes. Ah, I did it. Okay, this is the tilt test. Oh, look at that. You see, this has the ability to automatically turn on a backlight when you tilt the watch up towards yourself. So there's actually a little mechanical device built inside the watch to sense that movement. And this is just telling you whether or not it's working correctly. See, it uh, right now showing nothing there, but if I tilt it a little bit more and I get those four number eights, that means the tilt sensor is working correctly. So there's your diagnostic right there. And finally, the last one, if I push all these buttons except for this one here, let's see what I can do here. Ah, now this is your solar panel test. As you know, the face of the watch has a solar panel built into it because it's tough solar, so it's charging up the power source inside the battery at all times. Uh, well, at all times that the, that the watch is exposed to enough light to do that. So what does this mean? SLR for solar and there's nothing on the screen? Well, what I'll do here is I'll just cover the screen with my fingers. And then when I let go, now I've got four, uh, eight digits on there. And that means that the solar cell just reacted to my, uh, you know, putting my hand over it. It doesn't go back. It doesn't like alternate back and forth like the tilt test. It just, once it shows me that uh, that has happened, it just stays there until I push a button to get it out of that mode. So there you go. Those are the diagnostics for this particular watch, the diagnostic screens. And um, a lot of other G-Shock watches behave almost the same way with that same combination of buttons. So, um, you know, if you have some other G-Shock watches besides this one, you can kind of test that out. And well, there you go. So I will make some more videos soon, a little bit more in depth, but that's just some of the features I haven't shown off yet about some G-Shock watches. If you were curious about those diagnostic screens, now you know how to get into them. And I will see you again on another soon to be made episode of the Good Timekeeping Show. Thanks for watching.